Say hello to the camera. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? We're great. Amazing. I'm ready. Ready yes. to give it to our Torah. Perfect. Can't wait for, for my opportunity to sit down and talk to everybody about what we have to learn about this week's Parsha. We've got a lot of exciting things to talk about. See you soon. Is it working? The camera's working. It is working. Yeah. It is working. Sometimes the, the Bible puzzles us by including details that seem to be extraneous and unimportant. Uh, Parshat Peshalach includes a very fascinating detail of that sort. We're told about the Jews after the Exodus, after crossing the Red Sea, in which the Egyptians are drowned. Moses gets up and leads the Jewish people in song. He composes a beautiful song called Az Yashir, the Song of the Sea. And after reading the entire Song of the Sea, we're told an extraneous detail, a detail that seems unimportant. We're told that Miriam then took uh, tambourines and drums, and she went out with the women, and they danced and they sang along with everyone else while they were dancing and singing at the sea. And at initial glance, this seems to be unimportant and extraneous. This is a celebration of an entire people. Why do we care who precisely is leading what? Why do we care which genders are involved? Why is this particular detail important for future generations? And I think the answer is actually quite simple. This particular detail underlines a hidden act of heroism that is very often unnoticed by most readers of the Tanakh, most readers of the Bible. And it is critical for us to pick up on this and that is why the Torah specifically bubbles to the surface this particular act of heroism by noting how Miriam leads the women in song. And to understand this act of heroism, we actually have to go to the very beginning of Sefer Shemot, to the beginning of the book of Exodus, because there we see a different act of heroism. We're told about how the Mialdot, the midwives, preserve the lives of the Jewish children. We're told about how Moses' older sister Miriam looks over him as he's put into a small basket into the river. And she ultimately retains the connection to him. She's the one watching over him, trying to make sure that he remains safe. And these two narratives at the very beginning underline a hidden act of heroism. This act of heroism is a heroism of love it is a heroism of survival. It is the heroism of the Jewish women. And that is, is that the Jewish women continue to have children and continue to nurture families throughout 400 years of slavery. And if you think about it, the story of the exodus from Egypt is really two different stories. There are the heroics of Moses in which he comes with miracles and plagues and in a, in a period of six months, redeems the Jewish people from Egypt, which is the heroism of might, the heroism of triumph. And on the other hand, you have the heroism of the Jewish women, a heroism that endured over a period of 400 years. It is the heroism of survival, it is the heroism of love, and it is a heroic act of preserving the Jewish family. Jewish women through these years are acting as midwives and making sure that children are born. Jewish women through, through these years are watching over their babies when Egyptians want to murder them. Jewish women through these years continue to have children when it's absurd to have children. And as the Talmud and Sota tells us, that it's in the merit of Nashim Titkaniot, righteous women, that the Jews were redeemed from Egypt. And the idea is that without people willing to nurture families, there would have been no exodus, because in less than 400 years, the Jewish people would have disappeared and perished. And that's why, that's why the Torah underlines that Miriam and the women get up and sing and dance. Because here, we are paying, due, paying, paying our respect, our due respect, to a different type of heroism, the heroism of survival, the heroism of keeping a family going 
when it seems absurd to keep a family going. And this is something that we need to reflect upon. Because very often when we think of what's heroic, heroic are grand deeds, heroic are grand projects, heroic are grand triumphs. But actually, the heroic heroism is found in the simple act of day-to-day -day survival, the simple act of building Jewish families, the simple act of nurturing Jewish children. I think about an anecdote told about a famous Israeli Rosh Hashiva, Rav Yisrael Zev Gustman. Rav Gustman was a survivor of the Holocaust, and he lost his son Meir during the Holocaust as a young child. Now every year in Jerusalem, they have a parade on Yom Yerushalayim on Jerusalem Day, in which the children sing and dance in the streets while they parade. Rav Gustman used to go every year with his wife to watch this parade. And once one of his students found him there and found it unseemly that this important man, this man of substance, was sitting and watching a children's parade for hours. He had no particular interest in the parade in terms of family. He was just going there to watch Jewish children dance. And so the student said to him, you're a, you're a serious man, Rav Gustman. You're a man of substance. What are you doing sitting here watching a children's parade all day? And Rav Gustman looked at the student and he said, those of us who've seen so many children be killed and suffer, for us we have to come and see children dance and rejoice. And this is the idea that we are learning from Miriam. There is the heroic of grand deeds and great changes and sweeping redemptions, and then there's the heroic of building Jewish family. And every time we see a Jewish child dance in the street, every time we see a Jewish child smile, Every time we see a Jewish child be born, we have a lot to celebrate because it's something heroic to have a Jewish child. That is Miriam's heroism. That is the heroism of love. That is the heroism of survival.